Welcome, everyone, to Season 2 of Murder in Stratton County. The mystery saga continues with even more murder, mischief, and mayhem. Written by Elizabeth Spoon and Rylan Mason. Narrated by me, Brian Shepard. Episode 13, Lost But Not Found. At 11 p.m., Diego should have been in bed. Instead, he was on the phone with Barney Wilson as an update in the storm came through. They're saying it should stop tomorrow night. How much are they predicting now? At least another 18 inches, Barney answered. Great, just what we need. This is going to create major problems for the search. Search? Barney inquired. Yeah, I heard on the scanner that we're missing a police cruiser. They're having a hard time searching. This will only hinder the search, I'm sure, Diego stated. Does that mean the officer is missing? And our mayor, Diego sighed. Well, I hope they find them. I would not want to get caught out in that. I'll talk to you later if I get a new update. Okay, Barney. Talk soon, Diego said as they both hung up. Diego had already called Sheriff Ratchet's office, yet he was already out searching with Deputy Marks, and the dispatcher had no comment. So, no help there. He would have to hold off on the story until he had all the facts, hoping everyone involved was okay. Diego only had the Stratton Gazette to keep him focused, now that he had placed the restaurant up for lease after the murder of his mother, Maria. There was no way he could run both at the same time, and he only knew so much about running a restaurant. Apparently, Gemma Mint would be handling everything as she happened to be in town the same time that Ryan Green bought his house. So, Diego had inquired then. The new owners were supposed to be arriving in the morning. However, with the storm, that is not happening. For now, he would be hunkering down and would wait until he would hear word from the sheriff's office or, like normal, a trip to the mayor's office for a statement. He would have to wait in the dark as the power finally flickered off. After everyone had left town hall, Ryan was the last one out after the ladies in the clerk's office piled out. Bradley would come and rescue him, as he didn't want Ryan attempting to drive home in the heavy snow. Even though Ryan insisted that he was a big boy and could drive himself. Yet, after looking out into the parking lot, Bradley was already there, waiting. That would mean you drove after Doobie and you saw nothing? Sheriff Ratchet asked Ryan on the phone. No, Sheriff. Bradley and I didn't see anything. I mean, it was bad enough trying to see to stay on the road. Well, now that the snow is getting worse, we will have to wait till morning. Poor Jordan. He must be going out of his mind. Trust me, he wants to go out and find him. He's worried sick. Keeps picturing a frozen body. Well, I just hope that they're okay. If it wasn't for the weather, we'd all be out there looking for them. I know. Knowing Brian, I'm sure he's fine, Dugan replied before hanging up. The snow continued to fall, wet and heavy, which now has the entire town in the dark. Not only that, it had completely hidden the cruiser from plain sight. A snowy coffin. Brian could see that Doobie was finally coming around. Slowly, his eyes fluttered open. Doobie, you all right? Brian asked as he leaned forward, pressing his hands against the bulletproof glass. My head is killing me. What happened? Are you all right? Doobie asked, turning too quickly and regretting it. I'm fine. I believe I hit my head as I have a nice lump on my forehead. Touching, he could feel where he whacked his head. And good. Let's see if we can get out of here. Doobie said as he took his seatbelt off. 
He tried to open the door, yet with the amount of snow and ice, it wouldn't budge. He would have to kick the door open. Brian watched while eating his honey bun as Doobie scooted across the middle console to attempt to kick the door open, which, after a few tries, it finally opened, dumping snow in his lap. Looking around the best he could, it was obvious to him that they went off the road. If it wasn't for the fact that he could see the curve of the bridge, he would not have known where they were. One thing's for sure, we're not walking in this, Doobie said, as he got back in and shut the door. I'm sure they're out looking for us. I hope so. Honey bun? Brian offered, which Doobie took after opening the slot. Thank you, he said, as Brian also handed him a bottle of water. Do you think this thing will turn over? Maybe get some heat? Brian asked, as it was getting colder. A chilly minus 19. Doobie tried to start the engine on the cruiser, which was push start. It whined as it tried to turn over. Come on, this thing is brand new. I remember writing the check for it. You bought a Ford, sir. What did you expect? Hey, I happen to like Ford, thank you very much, and they were very generous to provide us with at a price I couldn't refuse. Just then, and for the third push, the cruiser came alive. Sending the heat on to frost and on high, he then got out, keeping the door ajar as he made his way to the back. The snow had covered the tailpipes. If they had continued to run the car without unburying them, the exhaust would just pour back in. He then moved through the snow, which was up to his knees, Brian could swear when he opened the door. He had also cleaned the front grill, allowing the engine to breathe. I found my phone, yet I'm afraid I can't use it as the screen is broken. I can't tap on anything. I can see that I have missed calls and text messages, but I can't see them. What about you? Did you try your cell? What about the radio? Brian asked. My phone is dead, and I don't have a charger. I can try the radio, yet I doubt we will get through due to the storm, Doobie replied as he picked up the radio receiver and began to call out for help. Just then, the cruiser moved forward and settled more into the embankment, most likely due to the warming of the engine and the underneath melting. At that point, Doobie was quick to apply the emergency brake, just in case. However, the cruiser settled too close to the water, as it was starting to come in from behind the pedals, slowly. You are going to wear out the carpet, sir. Would you like for me to make you some tea? Patricia asked as she helplessly watched as Jordan had done nothing but pace back and forth in the drawing room while the fire was the only thing keeping him warm and the room lit. I can't help it. And yes, tea would be nice, thank you, Jordan replied as he finally had stopped to answer her. He looked and felt exhausted as it was now going on close to 1 a.m. As Patricia went off to grab the kettle to use in the fire to heat the water, Jordan's cell phone started to go off. Hey, Ryan, what's up? Bradley left the house, said something about seeing a light from down the road. Almost looks like a searchlight, Ryan said as Jordan got his hopes up. So it might be the searchlight on the cruiser? But how did we miss them and have them been so close? Is it far? Should I go out there and help? Patricia, grab my coat, will ya? No, Jordan, that's okay. Bear said just to stay put and wait for him to get back. I have also called the sheriff. However, I'm not sure how much help he's going to be. Bradley is walking down the road. I'll let you know the instant he returns. Ryan finished. With an okay from Jordan, they hung up. Now to wait. The radio calls went unanswered as Doobie tried multiple different channels, but with no luck. He left his searchlight on along with his blue and reds. 
maybe the light would cut through the mound of snow on top of the cruiser. So, placing it back on the sheriff's channel, he would wait and try ever so often, in between trying to remain calm as water continued to flow in. Doobie doesn't realize that the front end of the car is not sitting on the ground, but frozen ice, which is melting as they just sit there. How can you be so calm? We have water coming into the car, Doobie said as he watched Brian roll the window up after having a smoke, which Doobie protested, yet Brian won. Hoot and hollering and acting a fool is not going to get us anywhere. If we panic, we screw up, and something bad happens. I see it in the movies all the time. Besides, we can get out at any point, Doobie. A crackle is heard coming over the radio, which grabbed both's attention. Hello? Is anyone there? This is Officer Doobie. We've gone off the road, and we need help. Over. Hello? A male voice answered back. Yes, I can hear you. Who's this, over? Hello, Mayor. Did we have fun sledding? Maybe next time you won't be so lucky. Hello, everyone, and thank you for listening. Catch you next time.